Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. This is Flourish from James and Clarissa A. Wilson. This is from the same team that brought us Everdell, a game that I really enjoy, published by Starling Games. So I've managed to get hold of a preview of Flourish to show you. This is what they're calling the Signature Edition. There's a base game and two little mini expansions or different modes of play that you can layer on top. It plays one to seven and I'm going to demonstrate the solo game for you. We'll talk about the multiplayer game at the same time. First thing you'll need to do when you get the game is spend a good hour or so putting all these little pieces together. You don't need to put them all together, it depends how many players in the game you have. There's an insert that comes with the game, but oh, this is part of the Follies mode of play. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, but there's going to be one for each player. So if you're playing two player, you're going to need two of these. If you're playing solo, you're only going to need one. One of each of five different buildings. This is a game that has us building a garden. And with the little Follies expansion added on, it'll be a garden with some ornamentation. There's also the Friends mini expansion, which is basically a, a deck of mini cards. And it kind of gives you bonus points for attracting friends to your garden. Different types of wildlife and so on. The artwork in this is beautiful. And the Starling Games production will really showcase that artwork. In the solo game, we're going to be playing like the two-player game, but we're playing against an automated opponent who is going to score some points. In the basic game, you can play competitively or cooperatively. If you're playing cooperatively, you'll each have a score and you'll take the sum of your scores and that'll give you a final victory or medals the game is challenging to reach. Competitively, it's a case of trying to beat your opponent's scores. In the solo game, take your score, take away McGregor's score, and the game presents the soloists with target scores to try and reach. The rules are pretty simple. This is a gateway game that plays relatively quickly with players all acting simultaneously. They've really gone to town with the production. We've got these wonderful score dials, seven of these that you'll put together. We've got these walls also that you put together and they'll separate each player. So it's one of those games where you're playing with more players you're going to be playing a card to your garden and then passing two cards to your opponents. In a two-player game, that'll be one opponent, or in a solo game to McGregor. In a multiplayer game, one card to your left and one card to your right over a wall. So really, it's a simple game with lots of overproduction that makes it all a visual treat, but that's part of it. This is a game that's meant to look wonderful and you're meant to relish the aesthetic. Let's set up and we'll play the solo game and then we'll touch on the multiplayer rules as we play. It's a very simple, short rule book. And there's solo rules, there's a reference sheet on the back. We've got targets here for your medals, the scores you need to achieve. We've got a little reference card as well that helps us with scoring. And then we've got a single page, double-sided, with the rules for friends and follies. If you want to add them in, you can add one, both or neither. In a two-player and solo game, we're each going to take a score dial, one for ourselves set to zero, and one for McGregor set the same. Shuffle the deck of 98 cards. This is the beauty of the game. You're going to be building a garden of 12 cards with all these different plants, paths, walls, stone ornaments, follies, if you're adding this expansion. So start with a hand of six cards for each player and a wall between each player. For the solo game, give McGregor 12 cards and place the deck available to all players. The game is going to last four rounds. Each round we're going to be playing three cards from our hand. When we play these cards, we're going to be creating our garden. So for example, in round one, I might end up playing three cards. Then we're going to score that round. Then we'll play another three cards into our garden. We'll score that round. We'll do it a fourth time and then we'll have the end game scoring. Each card in your garden has these flower icons. And in the top left, some of your cards will have end of round scoring. So for example, this one here says, I score one point for every rose in my garden. I've got one rose in my garden. Okay. Some, like this card, will have scoring based on what's in your neighbor's garden. This one says score six points if you have as many or more ivy icons in your garden as your neighbours. Other cards might score purely based on 
what's in your neighbour's gardens. So you can see the dynamic playing cooperatively and competitively, and indeed solo, is going to be very different. Competitively, because you're scoring points off your neighbour's gardens, you have to keep an eye on your neighbours. Playing cooperatively, then you have to work with your neighbours. But not just that. In a game turn, not only are you playing one card to your garden, but you're also passing two of your cards to your neighbour. So in a two-player game or a solo game, you're passing it to your single neighbour. In a multiplayer game of three or more, you're passing one card to your left and one card to your right. And obviously you're going to receive two cards. And so although the rules are simple, there's a lot of strategy then in the cards that you're passing. Are you passing cards that you want to get rid of? Are you passing cards that you want your neighbours to play? And whether you're playing cooperatively or competitively will change the significance of the cards you're passing. OK, let's dive in and demo and let's see how this thing works. So I've got six cards for me, 12 for McGregor. And if we're using the friends variant, take two friend cards. This gives me plant symbols that I'm trying to chase down to get bonus points in my garden. I'm trying to attract these insects and chickens. So looking at my hand, this one has an end of game scoring. Okay, so I, uh, icons in the top left or end of rounds. Icons at bottom right are going to be scored after round four. Let's pass these. It may be these are cards that he ends up passing back to me and play this one. In a multiplayer game, you would play the cards you want to play to your garden face down so you're not giving anything away and then pass. Okay, play and then pass. Obviously, solo, we can play and then pass. McGregor is going to do the same, so our opponents, or in this case, McGregor is playing a card face up and then we'll grab two cards from the top of his deck and pass to us. Additionally, we take one card from the top of the draw deck, and that kind of replaces the card that we played. Right? So we've always got six cards in our hand. Finally, we shuffle the two cards we passed to McGregor into his deck of 12. So we could get them back. We might be that he plays one of the cards we passed. It may be that he gives us them back. So playing solo kind of adds that extra layer of, you know, what do I pass? You know, is it a card I want to get back? Is it a card I want him to play? Yeah. In the multiplayer game, the two cards you've received in a two-player game, you get them from, from your single opponent. In a multiplayer game, three or more, obviously, you're getting one from each neighbour. And then, just like in the solo game, you'll take one card to replace the one you played. So whichever mode you're playing, you'll always have six cards in your hand. We're going to do this twice more, and then we're going to end the round, and then we'll do our end of round scoring. Okay, everyone will do that simultaneously and chalk up their scores. We play three rounds like so, a fourth and final round, and then do your end game scoring. In the, let's just lay out like we've been building a garden. So we'll have nine cards by the end of round three. Round three. After scoring the third round, you'll take the two cards that were passed to you, but you won't draw from that deck. So you'll end up with a hand of only five cards. From those five cards, so keep this in your mind, from those five cards for the fourth and final round, simultaneously you're going to play three cards right, to complete the 12 in your garden. You'll play three cards, not one. You'll play three cards and then discard two. It's going to be slightly different with the Follies expansion. And that's because... When you're playing these cards, the order you place them doesn't matter. Okay, but with the Follies expansion it does, because you can be scoring points based on adjacency. I'll come to that in a bit. And in that final fourth round, you'll actually be where you place those three cards can also be on existing rows. So each round, you're laying three cards, you're scoring end of round. But when you score end of round in the second round, you'll be scoring based on your whole garden cards placed in a previous round as well because your garden's getting bigger okay what about follies at the end of the first three rounds so it's the end of round one you can place any of your unplaced follies maybe you've got five in your garden and it's significant where you place them so before placing them you can rearrange the cards in your current round if you wish right not previous rounds and you'll be scoring points based on the plant icons, on the follies. Two points for each matching symbol on that card and on adjacent cards. 
All right, so that's why it's important when you're playing with follies that you create an ordered three by three grid. Any unplaced follies would score you minus five points, but they can only be placed on a plant card matching the symbol. All right, so I couldn't place the rose here, for example, just to get it out and prevent the minus five. Okay, I think we've got all the rules down. This time I'm going to play Ivy past this and this. Okay, so McGregor plays a card. You grab two and one from the deck. Okay, back to six cards. So I'll shuffle that in. Third turn. Let's play this one. And then perhaps give him some ivy. If I give him this one as a danger, he's going to build up on roses and get nine points. I do need some roses in my garden. And then the fungi and and tyrannums are the I don't really know plants very well. So I think I'll pass. Alright, let's pass these two. Okay, quite tricky already. Your play. Pass. We'll draw and then we'll score the end of round. Now remember, for follies, we can add one if we wish. Now you might say, well, why don't you just wait until the end and then you know, round three and place your follies. You can only place follies on the cards you played this round. Okay, so I could play this one here now, or I could try and wait and see what happens later. But I'm going to take advantage and place two follies right now. I mean, in fact, I could place three right now. As it goes, I'm going to hold back on this one. I'm going to play these two because these are both pretty good. And for the sake of options, let's, let's leave it like this. Okay, I'm happy with this. And now we can do end of round scoring. Don't score the follies yet. So this is six points if we've got as many or more ivy than our opponent. McGregor has none. Okay, he's got two roses, one hydrangea. So that's six points for us. This one says one point for every ivy. There's none over here. One point for every rose. So two points for those roses. That's eight points. Incidentally, the scores playing solo, your target scores. When you add in follies and friends, your target scores go up. The same happens in the co-op game. Okay, let's score McGregor's. And what you'll see is I've inadvertently given McGregor some points. Okay, one for every hydrangea, one for every fungi, and we've just so we've just given him two points for this one. Then one for every rose, that's two points here. That's one four. And then two points for every ivy, he's got no ivy. Okay, this is your neighbours. So for playing three or more players, you'd pick one neighbour, right? Your left neighbour or your right neighbour. And that's it, we've reached the end of round one. So we're gonna do this three more times. Shuffle these back in. Before we start round two, I do want to talk to you about another variant called the Garden Show variant, where players are seeking to earn ribbons. There's a whole stack of ribbons in the game. You shuffle these up and you give each player a set of three unique ribbons. If you give them two the same, just reshuffle so they get another. With the Garden Show variant, you're going to be playing three consecutive games. And at the end of each game, you're going to check to see if you've won any of your ribbons. To win a ribbon, you've got to have more plant symbols matching the ribbon than any other garden. If you win it, you flip it over and you win the points. So you might win more than one ribbon in a single game. And these are going to give you bonuses. So between games, so if I end game one with 30 points, game two, 20, game three, 24, then I'm going to finish with 74 points plus whatever I've won from my ribbons, 88. And then the grand winner of those three games 
the net across all their gains, hence why these go up so high, is declared champion. All right, so that's the ribbon variant. So although the base game is pretty simple, you can layer in all these different variants as you want to get lots of replayability. There's one other thing I should add. I do want some roses. I still don't have roses. Hopefully he'll pass them to me. One thing more I should add. Let's play this one here. Pass these two. This card has three fungi, but it also has a stone symbol. There's six different types of stone. This one's a tree. This is a tree stump. There's paths, walls, hives, lawns, and features. And they'll score just like plant symbols, except with the follies. So with follies, if an adjacent card only has stone, no plant, then it's worth three if it's adjacent. So this is a feature with no plant icons. Okay, so that's going to be worth an extra three point because it's next to a folly. This one here that has a path and a fungi, that says for every path symbol with fungi. Okay. So this would be a tree with fungi. Now you'll notice that because I'm playing with follies, I'm placing this in a certain place. But without follies, it doesn't matter. In fact, it doesn't matter. I could place it here because I can always rearrange at the end of the round. Okay. McGregor plays his, and of course with McGregor it doesn't matter because he doesn't have any follies or friends. Two to us. Shuffle these in. This path that McGregor's just played has an end of game, so after round four, two points for every hive. So lots of variety in the cards. There's also a compost variant, another variant, and that says at the end of the turn, before drawing a card, you can actually discard one card, so you could just toss one away out of the game, and then you'll draw two cards instead of one. Maybe I'll play those roses. Really do mess with this, but well, maybe something like this is okay. And then, just wondering that might have been better than this one actually. Uh, let's get rid of that. Yeah, let's go this way. I think. Okay, he plays, gives me two, I draw. All right. That's not too bad. Shuffle these in. I think I like this one. Let's get it down. Pass these. Okay, end of round. I'm going to place this here and this here. We haven't managed to score very much. One point for every fungi, so that's one, two, three, four, five, five points. So you only score the cards you place this round, but all cards in your garden count towards scoring. So, this takes me to 13, right? And McGregor has got none. That's good news. His deck's getting shorter. Okay. So I've got more roses. So I could get this one down and then this one. I'm going to play this one. It's tough knowing what to give him. Let's give him these two. An end of round score this time. He's got more fungi than us, which he doesn't. Okay, two to us. Draw. Shuffle these in. Okay, this time I'm going to play this one, and I'm going to pass him these two. Got a rose, so he's got three roses now, and we've got three. <laughs> Let's 
see what did we get. All right, it's not too bad. I know I want to get this one in. And yeah, I'll shuffle those. Let's see, let's see. What do I want to pass? Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what happens. All right. Okay. That worked out okay. He's going to pass me two. He's got these three to play. We're in round four, so we're not going to draw. I'm going to place this. Doesn't get me many points, but at least I got it out here. So we get two points for each of these hydrangea type flowers in one of our neighbours. And they've got three. One, two, three. So that's six points to us. Okay, on 19. And then he's just got this one. Six points if they've got more fungi, which they don't. So no points there. So it's final reckoning time. Remember, we've got two because it's round four. Discard two and play three. So I want to keep ones with end game scoring if I can. Okay, so we've got a little bit of an analysis going on now as which is best. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for these three and discard these two. So they're discarded. Where do I place them? So really I'm just placing them around my follies, right? So one here. Uh, this one up here. And then I can't place next to the roses, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. McGregor has got his final three. McGregor's got one end of round scoring, so we do count it in the final round before we go to end of game. So one point on our neighbours. Ah, oh, this is going to score him highly. For every anterinium or, or fungi, I'm making that up. <laughs> For every anterinium or fungi. And we've got quite a few, haven't we? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, he's up to 13. Now we're going to score every card that's got an end of game ability. Now I've got quite a few. This one says two points for every ivy in our garden. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's 10 points. This one says three points for every hive in our garden. So we've got one, two, that's another six. That takes us up to 35. This one says four points for every path with a fungi. I don't think we've got any. So no points for that one. Three points for every wall in our neighbors. There's one here. That's three points. That's 38. Now remember, paths in a two-player and solo game, they score in both gardens. So if we had any walls in our garden, that would score as well. If we don't, nine points if we've got more ivy than our neighbours. We've got three, four, five. They've got one, two, three, four. So that's nine points. That's 47. Nine points we've got as many or equal roses. We've got one, two, three, four. They've got one, two, three, four. So we managed to just nip in on that one and get nine points. 56. And then finally, one point for every ivy or these hydrangeas in our garden. We've got five ivy, haven't we? One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three of those. So yeah, five. Five points for this one. Takes us up to 61. Okay. Now we'll do McGregor's, take away his score, and then we'll do Friends and Follies. So three points at every wall, including this one. So that's three for McGregor. That takes him up to 16. For every ivy or rose, one, two, three, four. 
I, B, and one, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, so an extra four points. That takes him up to 20. Then this one's one point for every rose and one point for every ivy. That's another eight points. Two points for every hive in our neighbor's garden. We had two, so that's four points to him. 32. And actually, because I forgot to do this, paths in our own garden in the two player and solo count as well. So should have got, there's two more hives. So it should be an extra four points for McGregor. Two points for every rose. He's got four, hasn't he? So that's another eight points. That takes him up to 40. <laughs> We've not done terribly well, I don't think. One point for every Antorinum, Rhinium, and Fungi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That takes him up to 47. And three points for every tree in our neighbour's garden. And we've got one. That takes him to 50. Wow. So 50 points to McGregor means we take 50 away from ours. We're down to 11. And now we're going to do our friends and follies. So there's two points for every adjacent symbol. So for this one, it's two, four, six. It's up to 17. For this one, it's... Two, four, six, 23. Two, four, six, 29. Yeah, we could have got more ivy next to this one. Two, four, six, 35. And then two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 47, much better. And then for our friends, chickens, for every pair of antiriniums and fungi. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Yes, that's three pairs. So that's nine points. 56. And then for the insects, Every pair of ivy and roses. We've got one, two, three, four roses. One, two, three. Yep, so that's another four. Four times three, that's 12 points. 68. 68 is our final score. I think we've just missed out because for friends and follies, we've got to add 45 onto the target score. So our requirement is 75 for a bronze medal. Oh, we were short by seven points. I'm going to blame it on this card here, which I should have known was coming. I should have known. Without Friends and Follies, our score would have been 11 compared to 30. So, yeah, it was never going to be great. But we did manage to create a garden fit for some chickens. So there we go. That's Flourish. I believe it's on Kickstarter right now. It looks beautiful on the table. And some proper engaging gameplay certainly fills a little niche in my collection. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.